Brother Claude, could you all Twitter prayer, please? Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you, Lord, for this another day of life. We want to thank you, Father, for this place that you set aside that we could come this morning, Lord, and worship you. The spirit of truth, Lord, and we ask, Lord, that you remember those not able to be here this morning, whatever sickness or traveling, whatever. Father, we ask that you watch over us. Lord, we ask this morning that you bless our service. We ask that you let the prayer pray and Father, as he brings a message to us, help us to be receptive to that person's word. Help us, Lord, this morning to be submissive to your will. Father, help us to get self out of the way here this morning so it's just a few moments of time, Lord, we can get close to you. Yes, Lord. Father, when we leave here this morning, we can say a bit, it's good to be in the house of the Lord again, Father. We ask you to help us. Lord, to get ourselves cleaned up a little bit, Lord, so that we can face the world. Lord, those are lost and undone if they can look at us and see something, Lord, that they'd like to have or they'd like to be. Father, help us to do the things that be pleasing to you. Father, we ask this morning that you teach us to pray, Father, in the right way. Always to pray, Father, in your will, and asking you to let things go your way. Help us to get out of the way, Father, so that you can do your work. Lord, we ask this morning that you remember the sick and afflicted in the nursing home, the hospital, and those that are homebound this morning, Father. We ask that you comfort those, Lord, the death that's taken the loved one. Father, we ask to love all yes. things this morning, Father, that you save the lost before it be everlasting too late. Help us, Lord, to be a help for someone on life's journey. Father, go with us now through this service. We ask that you. Bless Brother Brad once again, Lord, as he brings a message to us from that country, Lord, going to far away, that one day, all, Lord, we're those that are saved. Have that blood applied to their heart, Lord. We'll see that great place one of these days. Father, go with us now through the rest of the service. We come to you this morning asking, trusting, and believing in that precious name of Jesus, Lord. Right? Jesus, Jesus, there's just something about thy name. Master, Savior, Jesus.
I read this every once in a while, but I, I didn't know if I was going to read it this morning, but I kind of went along with my message. Uh, I brought that music to that song she just sang this in my Bible. Didn't know what she was going to sing. And, and uh, at the end of the, the song, it, and it's always kind of powerful, I like that. Let me just read it for you. It says, Jesus, the mere mention of his name can calm the storm. Heal the broken, raise the dead. At the name of Jesus, I've seen sin-hearted men melted, derelicts transformed, the lights of hope put back under the eyes of a hopeless child. At the name of Jesus, hatred and bitterness turn to love and forgiveness, arguments cease. I've heard a mother softly breathe his name at the bedside of a child delirious from fever. And I've watched that little body grow quiet and the fever broke cool. I've sat beside a dying saint, her body racked with pain, who in those final fleeting seconds summoned her last ounce of Ebeline strength to whisper her sweetest name, Jesus, Jesus. Emperors have tried to destroy it. Philosophies have tried to stamp it out. Tyrants have tried to wash it from the face of the earth with the very blood of those who claimed it. Yet still it stands. And there shall be that final day when every voice that has utter, ever uttered a sound, every voice of Adam's race shall raise in one mighty, uh, great mighty chorus to proclaim the name of Jesus. For it is that day every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Ah, so you see, it not, was not mere chance that caused that angel one night long ago to say to a virgin maiden, his name shall be called Jesus. Jesus, 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 you know there is something about that name. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Well, I wasn't going to read it, but after singing that, I thought I'd read that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Take your Bibles. Go to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 4. There's certain stories in the Bible I like to preach on. And, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to preach on this, but I'm going to read a little bit of this uh, uh, great story here in the Bible. And then I, I've got a statement that's made about it here in the next chapter. But Acts chapter 3. I like this. Is now uh, starting verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple of the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's room was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms them that entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked in alms, and Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, and he said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat at the alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as a lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together into them in the, the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why ye look so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we made this man to walk? Says the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of the Father, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murder to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God hath raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses. You find a great event took place here. 
But you'll find in verse 4, chapter 4, verse 1, as they spake unto the people, the priests, and the captains of the temple, the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. I want to jump down to verse 16. This is a phrase here I want to preach on. Verse 16 says, saying, What shall we do with these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them, is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and notice what it says there in the last phrase, and we cannot deny it. Amen. I like that, amen. <laughs> he says, we cannot deny it. We find a beautiful story, amen. We find that this man who was lame from, his, from birth, says from birth, you can look over in chapter 4, verse 22, you'll find this man was over 40 years old. For more than 40 years old, this man was unable to walk. And for 40 years, what, a, what an awful state that had to be in. He was laid at the gate of the temple there. And boy, I like the they. It says they. I don't know who they was, but praise God for they. They felt it was important. We're going to bring you over here to the temple, to the place, this gate that was beautiful. And I believe it was a beautiful place there. You'll find uh, they stopped there. And, and I'm confident that for over the years, you know what? God took care of him. And God's people came by and praise God, they saw that poor fellow there and said, let me help you a little bit today and we have a God that met his needs. I'm going to tell you, praise God, he's a, for 40 years he was this way. But you know what, as people went by and they walked by this, this poor boy, this poor man, this older man, this middle-aged man now, they never dreamed. They always thought, well, I'm glad to see that God is taking care of his needs. But you know, they never dreamed that there was something that God could even do greater. You know what, they didn't think out of the box. They didn't think, well, I don't think. I believe maybe they got in there and they're having a prayer meeting and maybe they brought up his name. They said, okay, keep on providing for that man there. But you know what? Peter came by and he said, you know what? There's a God that can do something greater. He said, rise up and walk. He took him by the hand, amen. Never dreamed that we had a God. The Bible says he's able to do more and abound more than that we even, that we even ask or even think. My God can do more this morning. Yeah, that's right. He's able to do more than we even think. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And praise God, I've loved about that. I oh, was so beautiful about that gate. You know what? I know folks here, maybe I know some folks have been saved here at one time years ago. They said, I remember that spot right there. I tell you, that's a beautiful spot. This one that was leaping and jumping. That was a beautiful gate, wasn't it? Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord uh, for that day. You find Peter came by. He said, my God's able. My God's able to take care of that. But in the midst of this, as I already shared, there were those that said they didn't like this and they made a statement. They said, what shall we do with these men? What are we going to do with them? Boy, I didn't like it. Isn't it amazing? How, how could you be negative on something like this? But you find they were. And you know who they were? It was the religious group. The one that thought pat themselves on the back and said, well, I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm religious. I go to church. I come by here every day. I've seen that one there. But you'll find there, they made a statement, what shall we do with these men? But they, they also said, they said, we cannot deny it. Boy, I like that. The same ones that hated Jesus, the same one that you find they hated Jesus, you find those... Uh, 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 you find that uh, there were followers, there were those that were in church, there was there that, that the events had taken place. They said, I cannot deny it. You know what? There's something to this Jesus. In there? Yeah. There is. Praise the Lord. So I want to share a few things, just a couple things here on, about this they could not deny. They just could not deny. First thing, they could not deny the master, amen. <laughs> Praise God, it's hard to deny Jesus. It's hard to deny him. I tell you, there was no doubt that something was taking place. Amen. There was no doubt there was a movement that had taken place and all in the name of Jesus. 
You know, I want everyone to know we're here in the name of Jesus. That's what it's about, amen. There's folks, they'll come around, they'll come together. We're in the name of Jehovah. We're in the name of this. We're in that, my name. I may tell you what, we're here in the name of Jesus Christ. You know what? There's power in that name. Praise the Lord, amen. You'll find there, this, this was a man. This, this was a, we find this, this movement. They saw this. They saw, there was something about it. He's hated by many, ignored by many, but they couldn't deny him. And I, boy, I tell you what, there is something about that name Jesus. Amen. Special. They couldn't deny him. The fact of the matter is, they was pointed out that, you know what, this is the one you crucified. This is the one you let a murderer set free. They couldn't deny that, could they? They couldn't deny those facts that had taken place. They couldn't deny. You know what I like here? They, the verse 15 said that God hath raised him from the dead. You know what I like about this text here? You don't hear him say, well, that's a lie. Do they? You know why? They couldn't deny it. And you know what? This morning, he lives. Amen. He lives. I don't care. You can say, well, I don't know. I, here's the world up there today. It says, oh, there's nothing to that. But deep down, they know there's something there. They cannot deny there's a movement. You'll find what took place here. Some 5,000 got saved. Amen. Amen. They said, you can't deny this, Jesus. There's something about it. There was witnesses. There's some 500. The word had spread everywhere. There was proof. They were alive. These people, they were meeting daily. And you know what this movement did? It just got bigger. Let me tell you, there's something about that name Jesus. There's something about that name Jesus. They couldn't deny it, but Peter, he sure believed he was alive. You know what would be good if the world could look at you and I and say, boy, they really believe Jesus lives. Yes. You know what? I, they think when they talk, that they're talking to Jesus. I do. He's real. It's just not some storybook. Praise God, the world needs to see that we believe the Master lives. He's my help. I need him today. I'm going to need him tomorrow. I need him every day, amen. They could not deny, amen. And you know what Peter said? We didn't do this by our own power. We won't look there, but two or three times he said, we did this in the name of Jesus. Amen. They couldn't deny that. You know why I'm here today? Because of the name of Jesus. You know why my name's written down the Lamb's Book of Life? Because of Jesus. You know why I'm able to function, amen, and overcome anything that the, the old devil in the world throws at me? It's because of the name of Jesus, amen. Praise the Lord. They could not deny the master, amen. You'll find here that even if you re-study this chapter, these two chapters here, Paul, Peter points out the prophets even told about this. You know who these people were? They were Bible believers. They believed the prophets. And if they would study the prophets, they would find out there was a man that they were pointing to, and it was Jesus Christ. They could not deny that. Those prophets told where he's going to be born. They told pretty much when he was going to be born. They told all those things about that. And if they were really studiers of the word of God, they could not deny Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. But you know what's so sad? With all that, you know what they still did? They denied him. Even though they knew, we can't deny it. That's a mystery to me. There's folks that'll sit in church service and boy, I tell you what, I know that's right, I know that's right. But you know what, deep down they know I can't deny that name of Jesus. There's something about that name Jesus. Yeah. Praise the Lord. One day as we shawty shared, one day they'll stand before God. And they won't be able to say, I didn't realize it. Won't be able to deny that. They'll be without excuse. But we find they could not deny the master, but I tell you what, praise God, they couldn't deny the miracle. 
They couldn't deny this. Imagine there's a good chance that they seen this gentleman. Just so happens the one that the, the, they took care of, the one that was healed was the one that was getting to the beauty by the beautiful gate. More than likely that's where they all like going in. I'm going to go through the beautiful gate. Every day they went by there and they said, well, there's that poor fella again. Boy, I tell you what, they probably got inside. They probably discussed him. They probably thought, they probably said, I wonder who sinned. I wonder uh, who sinned in the life. Maybe his parents. I don't know why that poor fellow, why God would allow that. You know what? This story isn't about the miracle. It's about the master. Amen. And many times we get all, uh, all wrapped up about the miracle. But God allowed this man 40 years. Yeah, God allowed that. You know he allowed that for this right here. Say, so why did God allow something like that? I don't know, but there's a bigger picture. You get down to the end of the story, amen, and praise God, amen. You know what? I'm glad for that story, aren't you? Amen. Praise the Lord. You find it was about the master, but we find they could not deny it. They knew about him. Imagine, they probably, again, as I said earlier, they probably said, well, maybe we should pray for that fella. Good night. When's the last? I wonder, did they ever pray that he might be able to walk? Well, let's provide for him. Let's take a collection when we go. Maybe they're good folks. But you know I have a God that can do far more than what we ask. We go in our lives and we sing, there ain't much hope. Well, I tell you what, we're just used to it. It's been like that way for 40 years. Good night. Let's give it to God. He can do greater things. Amen. Praise the Lord. And praise God, they couldn't deny it. Amen. They knew him by name. They knew everything about him. Imagine. Boy, I tell you what. Imagine they're in their religious service and all of a sudden they hear a little commotion in the back. And all of a sudden they go, what's going on? Well, what, what's happening? And they hear somebody jumping. Amen? Yeah. I'm not against jumping in church a little bit. Amen. I'm, I'm for a little of that. We need a little, little life here. Amen. Good night. Last week, didn't I preach on get your engine started? Has anyone got the engine going yet? Amen. Let's get it out of idle. Amen. Let's rev it up. Amen. Praise God. And you know what happened there? In that old normal uh, religious ceremony they had there, all of a sudden they turn around and they said, who's getting carried away back there? Amen. Wouldn't it be good if we get a little carried away back there? Amen. He came in and he's leaping and he's jumping and he's praising God. Amen. I tell you, they looked at that and all of a sudden they said, you know who that is? That's such and such. They couldn't deny it. Do you think they thought, well, maybe he was faking it all along. No, he won't fake. I tell you, there are some fakers out there. I tell you what, you go out there in them place, you go to those streets and they're doing something like that and you got to watch out. There's a lot of cons out there, but this one they knew was a little boy. This one they knew from the womb. This one, they tell you what, just wasn't somebody. They just said, I just saw him last week. Amen. He was hitchhiking by on the corner by Walmart. No, this was one that was there every day. They knew his mama. They knew that from a baby, he couldn't walk. Off. Amen. And when they saw him come in there, they said, what's going on? Is it getting carried away here? Boy, good night. You know what he did? He had met the master. Yeah. Good night. Anybody met the master? Amen. Amen. There's a, a hallelujah. Praise God. He's a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. And he came in, they could not deny it. In chapter 4, verse 14, it says there, And beholding the man which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against it. Amen. Ain't that amazing? We can't say nothing. Look at there. Can you imagine that? Praise the Lord, amen. They could not deny it was a miracle of God. They knew it was him. There was no doubt about it. You know what they saw? I tell you, I like the top of this man. I tell you what, praise God. You know what, he, he, he got, in fact, the matter is, you know what, why he got healed? Because he had faith. Right. Oftentimes didn't catch that in this story here, amen. It said in verse 16 of chapter 3, and his name, through faith, amen. in his name, hath made this man strong. Amen, hallelujah. I didn't realize, you know what, but praise God, he was a believer, amen. And he believed that there was a God, and he praised God he came in there. And you know what? He, you know what happened that day, though? He walked a little different. 
I'm going to tell you what, when you meet the master, when you get to touch from him, you're going to walk a little different. If you didn't walk any different, amen, there's something wrong. Amen, Jacob wrestled with God that night, and praise God, he finally had to surrender, and when he surrendered, the Bible said he walked with a limp. Everyone said, what happened with you, Jacob? What happened with you? You know, he could have said, well, I kind of failed. You know what? I, you know, we've had a lot of folks fall and do different things here, walking kind of goofy around here lately. Amen. They could have said that, but you know what Jacob said? The Lord touched me. Amen. That's why I'm a little different walking today. Amen. And you know what else they noticed when he came in there? He's talking a little different. I mean, I don't know what it is. He's probably used over those 40 years out there. He probably had it down. He says, boy, can you help me and whatever it is. You know what? He came in there. You know what he says? Boy, the Lord has just touched me. Yeah. Look what the Lord has done for me. Right. I want you to know what Jesus has done for me. Yeah. Look what he's done for me, amen. When's the last time you came to the house of God and said, look what he's done for me, and said, oh me, amen, praise the Lord. Look what he's done for me. Look what he's doing for me. Know what he's going to do for me, amen. Good night, we need to have a bounce in our step. We ought to have a little leap in this, amen. You know what they couldn't do? They couldn't deny the miracle that came from Jesus. Boy, we got a world today, anything happens, they try to figure it out. You'll find even the medical field, I tell you, I like those stories, amen. We need to hear about those stories. You get to the doctor and they say, well, I just don't, can't explain it. Yes, amen. I can explain it. I have a God that can reach down and take care of it, amen. I tell you what, there's a lot of things in science I don't understand. I don't understand how things work, but I know there's a God. Amen, praise the Lord. I, it's quite a miracle, amen. I like this uh, this song is another song I like. It says, I took, it took a miracle. Yep. It said, my father is all powerful and that you can't deny. A God of might and miracles is written in the sky. Isn't that true? Amen. It took a miracle to put the stars in place. It took a miracle to hang the world in space. But I like this. But when he saved my soul, cleansed and made me whole, it took a miracle of love and grace. Yeah. You know what? They couldn't deny the miracle. Right. Yeah. Boy, I tell you what, you know what? I, I want, we got a world that wants to deny Jesus Christ, but deep down, they can't deny there's something about that Jesus. But you know what? When they look at a child of God, I hope they see Christ. Amen. Hope they can see that there's something different. They could not deny the fact that a change had taken place in that fellow's life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. They couldn't deny that miracle. Well, they also couldn't deny, they couldn't deny the master. They couldn't deny the miracle. They couldn't deny those men. Boy, chapter 4, verse 13 says, Now when they saw the boldness, of Peter and John and perceive that they were unlearned. It's amazing why God chose these folks. You know why? It was a mystery, wasn't it? I tell you what. You know what? God chooses the foolish. He chooses the unlearned. Amen. He chooses the ignorant. The world looks at them. And he said, they saw the boldness of Peter and John. They perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled. Said they took knowledge of them. You know what they noticed about these men? They'd been with Jesus. Amen? Amen. I wonder why they are. I haven't seen anybody quite like that. These men are kind of a mystery to me. They've got a boldness about them. They've got an authority about them. You know what? They, they believe in this Jesus. They believe he's going to come back. They believe he's a help, amen. They believe he can take one that's lame and he can walk. Boy, I tell you what, can you believe the boldness of that? And by the way, they've come to us. They're not afraid. Many have come to us. You know what we did? We had them killed. Yeah. But they're not as scared. They got some kind of power, amen. You know what that is. That's Jesus. They said, boy, I tell you, there's something about them. They spoke with knowledge and understanding. How do they know that? We know the scriptures. But you know, deep down, they said, I don't think I could go, to, go in a, uh, 
a contest with them because they had it in here, didn't they? Boy, you can have a lot of book knowledge and don't know nothing. Boy, I know folks tell me, well, I've read the Bible how many times, and I tell you, well, you didn't read it enough, amen. I tell you, when you read it, when it gets in here, uh, that's when it'll get you. And I tell you, I was telling Tori, amen, I tell you, I have a hard time. I I know some people, they can have a photographer, I can't even say that word, photographic Photographic memory. Now, I know you all got that. You'll read a passage and say, I got that memorized. I don't have to read that again. Good night. I'll read something today and I'll forget about it tomorrow. That's just how it is. Amen. So I just got to keep on reading. Amen. Isn't that right? And I know some of you that way too. That's why I keep on preaching. Amen. That's why we keep on saying the same old story. Amen. I preached this same uh, text about a year ago. You can't remember it. Amen. But hallelujah. I preach in a different. But I may tell you what. uh, uh, We forget, don't we? But I may tell you what, there was something they saw in the life of these men. I, you know, if someone came to our church, I'd like to say, well, there's something about them people over there. That's the kind of church I want, don't you? Yeah. There's something about them. They got something. I don't know what it is. They got a bonus. They got some assurance. Amen. They know they're saved. Amen. You don't find that everywhere. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. They said, we just can't deny it. There's something about it. There's something real. Boy, I tell you. He's real, isn't he? Isn't he real? Praise the Lord. They couldn't deny these men. They said, yeah, you know what we noticed is one thing about them. They'd been with that Jesus. Boy, you know why anyone can tell when's the last time we've been with Jesus. Amen. They need to be able to see that you and I have been with Jesus. Moses was up on top of that mountain for 40 days. Amen. He came down with a glow. Good night. I don't think it takes 40 days either to have glow. No. You know what? You can have four minutes. If it's quality time, amen, with the Lord, you'll have a glow. Amen. I want the world to see a glow. I don't want to see me, amen. Praise the Lord. They saw a special power. You know what they saw? What we're going to do with them, they said. They don't think, I don't think it's going to stop. You can read in the next chapter, in chapter 5, you find out, you know what they said? Boy, I tell you, they threatened them. They said, don't you be preaching this name of Jesus. We already told you once. And you know what they did? They threw him in prison. And you know what they did? They beat him. And then when they let him loose, these same disciples, they're skipping. I counted worthy. I counted worthy. And you know what it says? They met daily. They didn't slow them down. They didn't stop them. I tell you what, well, I can't, there's something about that Jesus. I can't deny it. We can't deny. What are we going to do with them? Amen. How frustrating it is. A child of God. Well, they also could not deny, and this is something you cannot deny, folks, the message. The message. You know there's power in the gospel. And whether you like to accept it or not, amen, there's power. It'll cut you, amen. And you know what you'll find here? Peter said he taught, he told them about what they'd done. We'll find here, praise God, they made a point to this man. You know what this man out here that was outside the temple, you've all been inside. This one here had faith. And then you find that they... They tell them in verse 16, it says, in, in this name through faith, let me jump down to verse 19. He says, repent. Repent. Anybody like told that? I mean, when I think about that, I think about the voice crying in the wilderness, John the Baptist. Boy, I tell you what, how many times did they have to hear that? He said, repent. Yes, amen. Repent. No, I just want to sign a paper. I just want you to vote me into the heaven. No, I, I think I did. You know what? Oh, I praise God, I'm for baptism. But I'm for repentance first. Amen? Amen? Water ain't going to save you. Right. Said repent. You know what? I believe deep down they heard that. Amen? They knew the story. They knew all about that. Amen? And praise God, you find that that message, you can't deny it. There's only by one name you'll be saved. 
Jesus Christ. Amen. There's not many ways, and we're just on our thing here. Now, now, you don't have to be in a Baptist church. But you do have to get through the blood. Yes. Amen? Yes. Now, we might not agree on some fiddly things, amen, that we make in a great big thing. But I tell you what, if you're saved by the blood of Jesus, amen, hallelujah, praise God. Yes. I tell you, I'm so glad for the message, aren't you? They said the prophet spoke of this message. They said it did? Yeah, you know what? You can't deny the message. You know the message is the same from the beginning to the end of this book. Yes, it is. Praise God. And I'm glad it wasn't through works. If it was through works, you and I just will go home because there ain't no hope. But praise God through grace. Amen. We find, uh, you know, uh, when I think about denying, the Bible says that, says if you deny me, I'll deny you. That's, that's quite point blank, isn't it? They made a statement, we cannot deny it. You know, the Lord has given enough evidence of Jesus Christ and his plan that when we stand before God, there'll be no excuse. You know, this morning I thought about, I cannot deny. You know what we need? The, the world needs Jesus can't deny that. Well, what a mess we're in. Our nation needs Jesus. Our families, boy, the family struck the devil's done a good job of messing us up. Our kids are being affected. We need Jesus. But you know, I can't deny the greatest need I have in my life. Boy, I'm glad God has provided many things. He has given me a job, a home, a wife, wonderful babies. He's given me a multitude of other things. But my greatest need, and it's always been, and I'll not deny it, is Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. There's something about that name in there. Aren't you glad you heard about the name of Jesus? Aren't you glad someone cared about you? You said, boy, I'm going to tell you. I tell you what, I, I'm looking for my grandkids, uh, my children. I tell you what, uh, the greatest need they have is to keep in mind, it's Jesus. Jesus. And by the way, that Jesus can handle anything. Amen. Let's all stand this morning. Father, you know our hearts. Lord, this was a religious group. They didn't care for this Jesus, but they sure couldn't deny him. Lord, this morning, help us. Help us to give more of you in our life and less of us. Thank you for that gospel message. We can't deny it. We're sinners. We're in need of a Savior. We need to repent. We need to turn to Jesus. Lord, if we haven't done that, Lord, help us not to deny it. These group here, Lord, they, they still denied, even though they had all the evidence. Lord, we can't deny. We can look in our world. We can see the miracles. We can't deny the master. He lives. We can't deny as we look at men and the changed lives that they have and the power of God that we see in them and the men and women of, of children of God. We can't deny there's a change that takes place. Help us, Lord, this morning that we would not deny you. That we would confess you. And one day you will confess us. Lord, speak to our hearts. Have your way in Jesus' precious name. Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed. I have a God that's able. It's sad to meet and meet. And for 40 years they, they were meeting and they had one outside the temple there. 
They never dreamed that there was a God that could do something more mighty than that they th than their prayers. We've got areas in our life. He's able to do more than we ask or think. Let's give it to Him. We need you, Jesus. We need you in dealing with the lost and dealing with a religious group. Those that they got their trust in, in works. Help us, Lord, we might have that boldness that others might see. They might say, I can't deny there's something different. There's a change that was taken in their life. They're not the same. They're a little different. And I take note, they've been with Jesus. Don't know why it's so hard for folks to confess Jesus. It's the sweetest name. No better name to confess.